Okay, so if you've ever seen a mathematical paper or a book, chances are it is written in LaTeX. And LaTeX is, at the moment, the best way to write uh, mathematical and scientific writing in general, because uh, it's very easy to, to write like formulas and divide things in sections and write theorems and stuff like that. Uh, so what is LaTeX? Uh, LaTeX is a typesetting system, and basically uh, it means a way to write stuff. And it's quite different from something like Microsoft Word, uh, because instead of adjusting your document visually and changing the appearance of, of your document uh, with a visual feedback, you have to sort of uh, write some code, kind of like HTML. Um, so you, you basically you tell LaTeX what you want to display, and the compiler takes care of displaying it in the best possible way. But let's see an example. So the program I'm using now is called uh, TechMaker. It's a LaTeX editor. Uh, there are many like this. You can choose whatever you want. They're basically all the same. Uh, you can also not use any specific LaTeX editor. You can just, if you want, uh, write your LaTeX code in a, a text editor like Notepad or Vim or whatever, uh, and then compile it by hand. But with this one, it's a bit easier to get started. So first thing, we want to open a new document. And here, uh, you, you are prompted some options. You, if you want, you can just click OK and whatever. Uh, but let me add a couple of things. Let me add the geometry package. And yeah, I think this is enough. OK, so what this little prompt did was just writing this stuff to the document. It's stuff that I could have written by hand. It's not important that I use this wizard to, uh, to get this stuff. And you don't need to know what this really does. So you see this one is to adjust the, the margins of the document, but it's not very important for now. And this part of the document is called the preamble. And things that you can do here is uh, including packages, which are like libraries for LaTeX. And you can also define stuff like uh, saying who the author of your, of your document is. So I'm just going to write my name. And what you want to appear in your document has to be written between this begin document and end document. So let's start writing something like hello world. And now, well, first of all, you need to save your document. So let me just, uh, I already have an example here. Whatever. Let's call this example. And now you need to compile. So you have to click somewhere, but the easiest way is to just press F1. So if you want, you probably have to click here, but I'm going to press F1. And you see, I'm going to get this document, which is empty, except for this hello world written here, which I'm now going to make larger because of, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and you can see, for example, that this part here did not appear anyway because, well, I didn't write it between the document uh, begin document and end document. So if I want to to have it appear, I'm going to write a make title here, which is going to display uh, the title of the document. And I'm going to no title given. Oops. Yeah, I also need a title if I want to display the title. Uh, yeah, title first LaTeX example. So I've written a title, an author, and if I press F1 you see that I get this uh, very nice title page, which is actually quite large. And my and my yellow word starts here. Now, yeah, I made the document very large. Otherwise, it's hard to see, but let me make it smaller for now. Yeah, something like this. OK. Uh, so the first basic things that you might want to do is to write something. Uh, maybe you want to write something in bold, like this word is bold. And to do so, you need to use a LaTeX command. And I'm going to use text df, and then enclose this word in this uh, curly braces. And you see if I write it here, so it's quite small, but you can see hopefully. OK, here you go. Uh, but it's going to be bold. This is why this is because I've used the text bf command that says, okay, the next thing that I write, uh, write it in bold. Bf is boldface, 
And the next thing that I wrote is this word enclosed by these uh, curly braces that uh, denote, like, uh, adjust for grouping things. Um, so in a similar way, you can do uh, this is italic. And to do so, I'm going to use nth. So some people use the text it command. And they basically do the same thing, as you can see here. But you will see, uh, I will show you the difference in a moment. And another thing that you might want to do is underline text. And to do so, you use the command underline. Very simple. And I'm going to again press F1 to produce the new file. So what I did up to here, so you see here I have this text document is just text. And what I have here is actually a PDF document. Uh, so yeah, when you have uh, this text, you tell the compiler, uh, the compiler to compile it and it's going to make a PDF document. It's also going to make a bunch of files with uh, the same name and different extensions, but you don't need to care about them. You just need to care about this PDF file. Um, another thing that you might see here is that uh, even if I did go on a new line for each of these sentences, uh, actually, there is no new line here. This is because if you want to go to a new line, uh, you have to to use two new line characters here in the text. So if I write this sentence, it is on the new line. This is going to appear down here. Uh, yeah, okay, so the last thing that I want to show you in this part is maybe uh, the difference between nth and uh, text IT. Um, so the difference is this. Text IT writes something, writes something in italic. IT is for I italic. Uh, while nth emphasizes something. So if I write a sentence that is all in italic, this maybe this sentence is important, and this word is very important. Uh, if you write something like this, this is going to be in italic. Uh, but if you want to make this word also sort of emphasized inside this, if I write text IT, well, LaTeX doesn't really know that. I mean, it, it, it writes it in italic, but it was already going to be italic. But if I write nth, then it becomes not italic. And this is because nth is sensitive of its surrounding. And it's a very clear example of what I mean by you tell LaTeX what you want to write, and LaTeX takes care of how you display it. So you, I said here that I want this word emphasize with respect to its surrounding. So LaTeX knows that its surrounding is going to be italic, so to emphasize this word, you need to write it in non-italic. While here, I emphasize this word in a, uh, in, in, in a text which was not italic, so emphasizing it means writing italic. So this is a basic example. Uh, yeah, actually, one very last thing, uh, you can also change the size of the things you write, and in order to do so, uh, you need to enclose your text in curly braces. And you use this other command, which is called, well, you can use many of them. For example, large with capital L. I'm going to write something, something large. Uh, you can also use large with lowercase l, and it's a little bit smaller. Uh, there's a bunch of them. The largest one, I think, is huge with capital H. And it's going to be very large. Uh, so notice it's slightly different. This is slightly different than this kind of command because this command is here and takes everything in between these braces, while this command is already inside the braces, and it's it's a bit different. Okay, now let's have a look at how we can write mathematics in LaTeX. So there are actually two ways. Uh, let's just remove all this stuff as we. Don't need it. So there are two ways to write mathematics, and the first one is called inline mathematics, uh, inline formulas. So let's say you want to write a sentence and say the equation, and now you want to write math. What you can do to have it displayed inside the sentence 
is use like backslash open parenthesis. Then you write your math here, like two plus two equals four. And then you close backslash close parenthesis. And you say, okay, is something like this. It's very easy. Um, if you compile LaTeX, now it's small again. You see that it displays a nice formula in line. And in this case, it's very simple because I just wrote like two plus two equals four. I right? didn't even need to write these symbols here. But if you want uh, to write something more complicated, complicated, uh, let's say something like this. For example, I want to write something like alpha less or equal than infinity. Well, LaTeX has all the symbols that I want to write already coded in. So I can write alpha. This is a command that, that displays a symbol, the letter, Greek letter alpha. And then for less or equal, well, if I want to write less, I could just type it. Uh, but for less or equal, uh, there is com the, the command leq. And then for the symbol infinity, there's this command here. And if I write this, you see that I have type, typeset this inequality. Let me just zoom a bit. Uh, you see, it's very simple. There's a lot of these symbols uh, already coded in. Uh, I'll give you a list, but it's like pages and pages of symbols that you can write by just writing its name. And if you don't know the symbols that you want to write, well, some symbols are also supported in, in uh, TechMaker. Uh, when you write backslash and you start writing something, it, it gives uh, suggestions on what you might want to write. Otherwise, you just Google how to write this letter in LaTeX or something like that. So the other way to write mathematics is display style. So say you want to write a formula which maybe has a fraction or something, some larger symbols, and you don't want them to be in line because it doesn't look nice. So what you can do is, uh, is use display style. For example, if you want to write a fraction, what we can do is, is instead of that, uh, doing uh, backslash uh, round parentheses, we can do square bracket and close with square bracket. And here we write whatever we want. So let's say we write again 2 plus 2 equals 4. And we have this. Uh, but if you want to write, let's say, a fraction, I can use the command frac. And frac takes two, two arguments, which is the nominator, um, uh, numerator and denominator of a fraction. For example, you can write 1 plus alpha over uh, to z plus y, something like this. And you see here I'm delimiting the numerator and denominator with uh, curly braces. As always, curly braces in LaTeX, they're not blocks of things. They're not going to be displayed. And if I display this, you see that it displays a nice fraction. But if I actually display this in line, so with a round parenthesis, you see that it, it writes it smaller because it tries to fit it inside the line. And depending on what you want, you just need to change between square or round parentheses. And LaTeX is going to try to display it the best way possible uh, according to what you what you said you want. So, and here, for example, you see you, if you want a fraction, you don't need to like draw a line or write symbols above and below. You just say, okay, I want a fraction. It's like kind of like programming, you know. Um, so let's see. Let's see something else. Uh, one important thing about symbols in LaTeX is that each symbol can have um, a subscript and a superscript. So let's say we want to write something like, uh, let's say we write it in display style, and we want to write a sum, which is the symbol sum for the big Greek sigma. And I want to write the sum for i that goes from 0 to infinity of something. So what I do is using a subscript to have something written below this sigma and a superscript to have something written above this sigma, let's say infinity. And LaTeX knows that if I want a, a, a sum symbol and if I want something below and something above it, it's going to write it below and above it. And notice that here I have more than one character, so I need to group them with uh, curly braces. And here I only have one symbol, infinity. So if I write it like this, LaTeX knows that I only want this symbol above. I don't need to use curly braces. Uh, and this is the way it displays it. 
And if actually I'm do, using subscript and superscript on some different symbol, LaTeX is going to uh, display them in a different way. So for example, if I, have, if I want to sum uh, xi, you see that the subscript i is not below the x. Is, you know, if I'm write, I've written a letter x, which is like a variable for LaTeX, uh, then LaTeX knows that I probably want this i to be here, down here, and not below the symbol. And if I write superscript here, let's say I write x i square, it writes like this and not just above it. So, and this is a nice way to display formulas uh, in display style. But if I wanted this formula in line, this would be a bit too large, right? So, let's see what happens if I want this in line. Have a look. So, if I change this from square to round, and also this, what happens is you see, the symbol changed. Now, the sigma that the i equals 0 and the infinity are not below and above. It's like on the, on the bottom part, but on the right. So it occupies less space, and it fits in one line. So, and this is all done automatically by LaTeX. You don't have to think about where do I write this symbol. Oh, no, now I, I changed my mind. I don't want this play style anymore. I want it in line, so I have to change the position of everything. You don't have to do it. You just have to say, OK, I want this stuff displayed in line. LaTeX, do the thing. Um, OK, other stuff. Uh, for example, uh, let's write it again in display style. Uh, let's say you want to use uh, parentheses. Um, but let's say you also have something like, uh, you're also summing, for example, a fraction, uh, 123 over 6. See, again, I use curly braces for the first block because this is a block, but here I have a block with only one symbol, and I did not write parentheses. Now, this notation is, is ambiguous because you don't know if you have to sum 123 over 6 every time or just after you've done this summation. So you want to write parentheses around it, right? You would write something like parentheses and parentheses. Actually, let's leave some space so you can see. But this doesn't look good, right? So what you have to do is to tell LaTeX that you want uh, this part here to be delimited by this left round parenthesis and by this right round parenthesis. Now, if LaTeX finds a left, it's going to look for a corresponding right, and it's going to make these symbols that, that you write directly after their left and right keywords, it's going to make them the correct size, magically. And if here I do not have a sum, for example, let's say I only have this small symbol x, I leave left and right, and it's going to adjust the size. It's not huge anymore. Uh, yeah, so this is a nice, uh, an, another example of how you tell LaTeX what you want to write, but you don't have to choose manually the size, right? LaTeX decides. Uh, OK, so let's see another example. So let's say you want to write a formula which, is, which spans more than one line. What you have to do is actually to use the align align environment is called and instead of writing uh, backslash square bracket you have to write begin and then align you see this here and you close with and align uh, now I'm using align uh, star with an asterisk uh, I'll show you in a second what it means so if you do this you can basically write exactly the same thing here. You ca I can actually just copy paste this and it's going to do exactly the same. You see there's no difference at all. But within, a, within, within an aligned environment, I can use more than one line. So for example, let's change this to something that actually makes sense. So let's do, um, let's do the definition of the exponential. So e to the x equals sum of, what is it? That we have, we need to write a, a fraction. Uh, what is it? X to the uh, i over i factorial, something like this. And say that I want to write what it what it is equal to, but I want to do it on a new line. Uh, I can use a new line, but in order to do so, I need to write double backslash. So that it knows that I want a new line. 
Uh, this double backslash can actually be used also outside an line environment, but uh, if you're outside and here, like here, you're writing text, you just use a double, double new line. It's, it looks much, much nicer. So here I want to write that this formula is equal to, uh, no, what is it? One plus x plus fraction x square over two plus another fraction x cube over six and so on and so on i can actually use the c dot symbol which are centered dots you see here uh, so you can do more on one line you know this doesn't look very much aligned even though i wrote align this is because if you want to align things in an align environment you can write you can choose which point to align with an ampersand so if i write n here and i run n here it's going to align this symbol here with this symbol here. So basically it's going to align the equal sign. So actually if I move this ampersand symbol and I move it like here, you see it's going to align this position with this position as I wrote here, right before the first plus. <clears throat> yeah, so basically this is what I wanted to show you. Um, oh, actually, yeah, why did I write align star? So if I didn't write star, you actually get a number for each line, which might be useful, right? So if you want numbers, you write a line without a star. If you don't want numbers, uh, you don't write the star. So yeah, this is basically it for writing mathematics. There's a huge amount of symbols. Okay, now I want to show you a couple more things about math mode. So let's say as an example that you want to write this. You want to write the set of real numbers whose sign is less than zero. So let's open a new display style math mode. And, okay, so the first thing you notice is that you want to write curly braces, but, you know, curly braces are used for delimiting blocks in LaTeX, so they shouldn't appear if you write them like this, right? And the way you write curly braces is you put a backslash before it, and this comment is just going to display a curly brace, actually. Let's just compile it, and you see this is, and if I don't write it, well, if I write it like this, it complains that there's, going, uh, that there's an error because I haven't closed it, and if I close it, it just displays nothing because curly braces just group things in LaTeX. So you have to write backspace curly brace. Okay, now let's actually define this set. So what do we want to do? We want to define all the x in, and we know that belongs to symbol how to write it, it's in r. Now this r is going to be like a normal r, right? Yeah, but let's write it like this for the moment. And then you want them such that, um, what was it? Sine of x is less than zero. Now, if you compile it like this, then you don't really get what you want. Let's see. Yeah, you see all these letters here get like stuck together. It's not very nice. Uh, actually, it's horrible. What is the problem? Is that here you're in math mode. You're writing math. So if you write text, you write letters, and LaTeX thinks that this is math. So these are just variables like x. What difference? If there is no difference for letter between this x, this s, this h. They are all treated as, as variables. So the way you write text inside math mode is with a command text. Very simple. So if I write test, text and I surround this in curly braces, that knows that this I want it to be displayed as text. So let's see how it looks now. Okay, there's, this is an improvement, but there is no space between like here and here. So how do you write space in math mode? Well, in the cases where you want to write space manually, you can use, well, there's two ways. One is to use a backslash comma, and it writes a very small space. Uh, you see it is really tiny. Uh, if you want a larger space, which we probably do in this case, you can write quad. I don't know what it stands for. It's just a larger space. And let's put one also here. OK, this is better now. Um, yeah, so I will write this r like a real number r, you know, this one. We want this typeset. Uh, the way you do it is with a math bb command, uh, which is basically just uh, going to write this letter, which you put here, uh, with a different font, with the proper font for math. Okay, much better now. Uh, there's just one thing that doesn't look 
very nice is that this sign here, well, it doesn't look bad, but you see, it's, it's treated like it, if it was a variable. So, for example, if we have also a variable s, and we write it here, and let's say we want to write s times this sign, uh, it's going to look, this s is going to look like this s, and that's, that's not really what you want, right? You want this sign to be the function sign. You don't want to be like the sequence of three variables, s, i, n. And to do so, well, many of these common use, commonly used functions are already uh, within LaTeX, so you just need to write backslash sign. And this is a command in LaTeX which displays the name of a function sign, which happens to be sin. And yeah, so this is basically what you want. If your command, uh, if a function you want to write is not typeset in LaTeX, maybe because you want to write it in a different language or something, uh, you can use the, um, let me write here, Actually, let me rewrite this one, the operator name command, and then you write sign here. And it's going to do exactly the same thing, it's just that sign was already coded in, and if you have something different, like, let's say you call it sinus for some reason, then you can write it like this. Now, both using this operator name here and this mapdb uh, can be quite, quite lengthy to write every time, so what you do is you can define it as a command in the preamble. So let's copy this thing here. What you can do is um, use the command new command, and it takes two, uh, two parameters. The first one is um, the command itself that you want to define. So let's say we want to call it this rr. And the second parameter is what you should do when you type that command. And I'm going to say I want to type mathbbrr. So now instead of writing this here, I can replace it with the new command that I just defined, rr. And it's going to do the same exactly. Uh, remember that this new command here has to be put before the begin document. It's in the preamble. We are defining a command. And for operator name, you can do something similar. Uh, but you, you can also use the uh, declare math operator. I think this is in the uh, AMS, one of these AMS packages. And it's actually quite similar, so let's say we call it SS. Uh, and what we want to display is sign, uh, S sign, let's call it, let's do like this. Uh, if now instead of this I write SS, it doesn't work. Oh, yeah, SS is already taken. Okay, let's do triple S. Uh, sorry, SSS. And this command is not taken, and you see that it displays S sign. So you see this command here doesn't have to be exactly the same as you display. You can write anything you want here and what you want to be displayed here. Yeah, so this was a quite simple example, but I actually showed you also how to define uh, new commands in letter to shorten your typing. Okay, now let's see uh, a few other things that we can do with LaTeX. Let's see how to write, for example, lists. So for writing a list, uh, we can use the so-called uh, itemize environment. Now, what is an environment? An environment is a block of text of LaTeX code inside between a begin something and end something. And what happens is whatever you write inside here is going to be treated with special rules. You already know the align environment which treats what's inside here as math, kind of like the uh, backslash square bracket thing. Uh, but what does itemize do? Basically, inside an itemize, you can use the item command to define an item of a list. So you see here, first item, and then another item, you write second, and then another one. If you write this, when for uh, each item command, is going to display. Oh, sorry, what's it? It's going to display. Here you go. Uh, a new list. Uh, a new item of, the, of this list. And similarly, if you want a numbered list, you can use the enumerate command. Here too. And if you compile this, uh, let me zoom out because 
you see that the list is actually numbered. Okay, and the cool thing is you don't need to keep track of where each number is. If you write another item here before the third one, uh, actually third, what happens is this one which you as third element uh, gets the number three and the other one uh, shifts to number four. Um, okay, this was very, very basic. Another thing that you can write is tables. So from the table you can write, you can use the tabular uh, environment and for a table you have to specify how many columns you want. So let's say you, we want um, three columns and for each column you have to type a letter which can be L, C or R depending if you want uh, the things inside this column to be aligned on the left, on the right or in the center. So let's write uh, something like this, LCC means that I want three columns uh, actually, let's say RCC, that's what I wanted to do. Um, the first one is aligned on the right, and then the other two are aligned, are centered. Let, let, let's type something so you can see what I mean. Um, so let's type like this is a table. And if you want to say, okay, if you want to delimit between columns, you do, if you want the first word to appear in the first column and then the rest on the second, you use an ampersand to separate between columns. Let's do something like this. So this is going to display a table uh, with one line and three columns, uh, which is, you, can't even, you cannot even tell this is a table because I, it's only one line and there's no border. We'll see how to add borders, but first let's add uh, a new line. So to add a new line, you do it like in, like in an align environment with double backslash. Uh, and let's do it like this. So this is the second line. Uh, let's do something like this. So you see, now things are going to be aligned like in a table, if, uh, except without borders. And you see, uh, this is the first column, because I separated here with an ampersand. And I said it, the first column should be aligned on the right. And you see here, the first this this word and this is the are aligned on the right, but the other two columns are centered, and you see this is centered here and this is centered here. Uh, actually, let me zoom so you can probably see better here. Okay, um, but uh, how do we draw borders? So if you want vertical lines, you can write them uh, by writing this vertical pipe here. Uh, let's say we want borders around the table, but not between these two columns. And if you want horizontal line, you have to specify it uh, on, each, on each row. So for example, let's say I want uh, a line here, and you have to use the command H line, and say I want another one here, but not on the bottom. Yeah, so this is what happens. Uh, and let's say, Okay, just to show you what happens if I align like this third column, I want it aligned on the left. I can do it like this. So you see, you don't have to manually adjust things here. You just have to tell LaTeX what to do using this code. And then the table is actually quite nice. Uh, okay, so if you want still this kind of table, but inside map mode, so let's write uh, an align, say align style environment. For some reason, a table inside a map mode is called an array. So you have to use a different environment, which is the array, which actually has exactly the same syntax as this tabular command. So let's say I want something like uh, two columns centered. I'll do something like this. And notice now that I'm, I'm stacking uh, nesting environments one inside the other, which is perfectly fine. So let's say I want to write an array with some math inside. So I want to write x and then 12 square. And then on a new line, I can write, I don't know, uh, sine of 23 and then zero, something like that. And this is going to be yeah, a table. It's, it's, it is centered now because I'm inside a line environment and align centers things. 
Um, so why would you want to use tables inside a math environment? Well, probably you want to write matrices, right? But this matrix doesn't have a parentheses around it. But one way to write a matrix is to do exactly this, and then use uh, the left command to write a left round bracket here, and the right round uh, parentheses here. And let's see what happens. Well, this is pretty much a matrix, right? Uh, there's actually an easier way. So you see here, I had to write like these three lines just to say I want a matrix and then close them here. Uh, there's an easier way, which is using the uh, another environment. So let's let's uh, let's go to a new line, uh, another environment called uh, P matrix. There are different ones. There's P matrix, B matrix, depending on what kind of parentheses you want around it. And uh, let's just copy this one. And now I should have two copies of the same matrix, one above the other. It is slightly different. And I would say that this second one uh, is actually looks a bit better. So because here I'm manually putting parentheses around the table and here I actually say, oh, I, yeah, I, I want a matrix, not uh, a something manually. So this is much nicer. And yeah, one other advantage of using P-matrix is that you don't have to specify how many columns you want. So if I want to add a new column here, I can just add new numbers, as many as I want. And then I also add them here. Uh, I don't remember how much I wrote, so like this. And I just get a bigger matrix. So this, this is also uh, very nice. Okay, now that we have written this nice document, um, we might want to divide things into sections, right? And it's actually very simple to do so. Uh, we just use the section command. And if you write section and say something like introduction, then you just get uh, this title. And the style of this title depends on what you wrote here. Uh, we have an article document class and if you want a different style, you can write, for example, AMS art, which is the article uh, format for the American Mathematical Society. And you see that it writes this in a different way. It's just a matter of style, but the nice thing is you, you don't have to manually change every, um, every section name to display in a different way. If you change the style of a document, then all section names change in the same way, for example, uh, if we have another section here, let me write a couple of sections. So this one is section, and we call it lists. And and this section here, let's call it tables. And see that the three sections uh, look the same. And if we change back to decide that we don't want this style, we want the other style, we change back to article, then we get the other style for all three sections. Um, there's also a command uh, called subsection, which works in the same way. Um, what is this? A line? Well, uh, actually, let me... any type of subsection which is numbered uh, one from one. Uh, if you do not want numbers, maybe for example the introduction is something you um, you don't want to be numbered. Uh, you can actually type section star. And so introduction is not going to have a number. And so this subsection is actually a subsection of, of nothing. So it gets 0 0.1. But yeah, this is actually something usually you don't want to do it. So you also write subsection star maybe to add this. Um, yeah, so basically you can do section, subsection, sub, subsection. I think it goes down to three levels. So sub, sub, subsection is the smallest. And there's also the chapter command. Uh, but this is only available in some document class. For example, if you choose book, you can use the chapter command, uh, well, like first lecture, uh, which is going to display in some way. Um, yeah, so this is it for sections. Uh, let's actually just change back to article. So, and let's move this. Um, 
So the last thing I want to show you is to write how to write uh, theorems, because if you're writing mathematics, probably at some point you want to write like theorem 9.7, exercise 2, or stuff like that. Um, so to do so, you have to include the AMS. Uh, it's not included by default, so maybe you you should add it. Use package AMS THM. THM is uh, short for theorem. A AMSS is again one of the packages of the American Mathematical Society. So once you do this, uh, you need to define your own uh, environment. And how do you do it? You can use the new th new theorem command. In the new theorem, uh, first you have to give a, a name for the environment. So let's call it THM. And, and then you want to write um, the, the name, the, the string that should be displayed. So let's say you want to write theorem. Uh, it should be displayed. So now, if we do, if we add one theorem at the bottom, uh, we can use the new environment which we defined, which is THM, and say something like this is an important fact. What's what's happening? Uh, oh, new new theorem, not new. Forum. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, new theorem. Sorry, I made a mistake here. Anyway, uh, you see here we wrote a new environment, and let's actually zoom again in. Here we go. And, and you have this theorem, uh, and you see it's called theorem one because it's the first one. And if you write another one, another one here. Uh, so, for example, you want to write if x is greater than 2, then x is, then x is also greater than 1, something like that. Uh, and THM, this is going to be called uh, theorem 2. Uh, sometimes one thing that you might want to do is to give a name to this theorem. So, uh, for example, or say who, who discovered this theorem. So, for example, this is a theorem by Gauss, something like that. And you do this by adding this you know, thing in, in square brackets. And here it becomes in, in round brackets, but you see, for example, it's like before this dot that delimits the theorem name. Uh, now, let's say you don't want this to be called theorem 1 and theorem 2 because, well, for example, because we are in section 2, so maybe you want this to be called theorem 2.1 because of the first theorem of the second section. The way you do it is you change this definition and you write here uh, in, in square brackets, you write section. And this means I want the numbering of the theorem TMH, uh, THM sorry, to follow the section numbering. And if you do this, sorry, some change, you see that now the theorems are numbered 2.1 and 2.2. .2. Um, you can define more than one of this type of theorem. So let's say I want something called, let's uh, say it right this time, yes, uh, something called proposition, and I want this environment called prop. And I can now write, for example, uh, let me write it here, prop, uh, they call it prop, I hope so. So, for example, um, we have one is different from zero, something like that. Um, and you see this number here says proposition one. So, if you want proposition to follow section, we can write we can write it here. But in this way, you get well, maybe maybe this is desired behavior. You get proposition two point one after theorem two point two because the numbering for proposition and theorem is independent. Uh, but maybe what you want to do is to have the same, they follow the same numbering, right? So because now proposition is following section and also theorem is following section, uh, but they're not following each other. So if you want the numbering for proposition to follow the numbering for theorem, uh, you can do, you can write here between the two arguments of a new theorem command, you can write theorem here, and this means follow the same numbering, not follow a sub-numbering. Let me show you with an example. So if I do it like this, uh, sorry, I have to write THM. THM is the name of the environment. 
So if I do it like this, and again now changes everything, you see that I have proposition 2.3 because it's 2.1, theorem 2.1, theorem 2.2, and proposition follows the same numbering, so you get 2.3. If I wanted to say, if I said instead something like this, proposition is going to follow a subnumbering of theorem, like theorem follows a subnumbering of section. So if theorem becomes 2.1 because it's after section is, is inside section two, now this proposition, uh, which is after theorem 2.2, will become 2.2.1 because it does the same as THM does for with section. So let me show you. And you see you get 2.2.1. Like as theorem after section 2 is going to be 2.1, proposition after theorem 2.2 is going to be proposition 2.2.1. But actually, usually what you want is something uh, like this. Uh, now, there are a couple of things that we can do is we can change the style of the proposition. You see, now these theorems are written in um, italic, the text of this theorem which is, uh, I think it depends on the style, like uh, here this article, maybe we change to AMS art, it gets something different, but we can actually force a style if we want using the theorem style. And if you write, for example, theorem style definition is going now, every theorem that I defined after this is going to have a, a different style, which is not italicized. Let me show you here, and you see that now this proposition 2.3 does not have uh, the italic style of, of a theorem. And there's a, a third style, so there's the default style, which is theorem, there's the definition style, which is this one, and let's say I want to define, there's also the remark style, if I'm not mistaken. And let me define something, for example, a warning, or warning the reader from a common mistake. Let's call this Actum. So you see that the name that I type here, so the name of the environment, doesn't actually have to have anything to do with um, uh, with what gets displayed here. So here I have prop and proposition, but these two words don't have to be related. So you'll see it here. And if I write something like begin, uh, what did I write? Warning. And warning. And I write here, it is a common mistake to think that, uh, oops, uh, okay, one equals zero. Yeah, uh, this is a different side, it's acting one, uh, because I have the numbering. So if I want this, for example, to have no numbering, as for the section, uh, I have to do it here, and I have to define a new theorem star. And with new theorem star, you get a theorem that has no numbering at all. Okay, now I just realized that I have probably confused you very much in this last section, because I have used um, the dollar sign instead of what I showed you um, was supposed to be the um, backslash round parenthesis, which I should have used, but the dollar sign does exactly the same. You see nothing has changed here. A dollar sign does exactly the same. Uh, I use it because I used it for years, and now it's hard for me to change to this, this other style, but uh, this is slightly better because it's easier for the compiler to tell where it begins and where it ends. So if there is an error, for example, you get a much more meaningful error message. Uh, so use this one. Don't do like I did in the last 10 minutes, which I use, where I use the uh, dollar sign. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's fine if you do either way. But just if you're learning now, use this this style here. Uh, there's also another thing that you that some people do is using double dollar sign. Now I shouldn't show you this. This should be censored by YouTube. Uh, which you which does um, display style math. Now this is even worse because. Um, some compilers actually do not understand this and, and give an error even if it works. So just if you want display style map, just use uh, this one here or an align environment. So yeah, don't, don't do like I did in the last 10 minutes. Use this style for writing map in line and display style. Okay, so I think this was everything I want to tell you for this first 
lecture on LaTeX. Uh, if you have questions, I don't know, send me an email, comments, um, a video, whatever. I'll write some more information in the description, so check the description for links and other information. Uh, goodbye.